Right, part two, here we go. A bit slower, a bit more relaxed. Obviously when I try and rush, it's no good. Um, but I think what there is more evidence for, and what is more overwhelming, is that there would be an agenda to to reduce the population. Let's face it, the establishment, the elite, whatever you want to call them, who live in a different world than us, they have no longer a need for us. They used to need people to make stuff. That is diminishing, if not already diminished. They knew it would be diminishing. They also knew that population was increasing. They also knew we were having an effect on the planet. Yet, they didn't appear to do anything about it. But then if their plan was to wipe out most of the population, Perhaps it wouldn't matter so much that the population grew. They could um, keep parts of the world in a good state, you know, enough of it, um, so that they would have plenty of room afterwards. <laughs> To live however they want, to live these <laughs> fictitious people. <laughs> when I go into the scenario, it sort of feels more and more fictitious. You know, what do they hope to gain from it? And if there is this sort of centralized power of elite, you know, who says they don't have falling outs? And you know, the whole thing gets exposed. You know? But let's let me go back to the point where you know we knew things were happening in the in the nineteen seventies. You know they knew that humans were having an effect on the world. So why didn't they say at that point, right? Best everyone has just two kids, two or three, right? Some people are still having six, seven kids. And and then be able to say ten years later, look, in our country we've said that people should only have two or three kids. And they pretty much stick to that. We've put forth the case about there being a finite planet, you know, and only so much stuff, right? I guess that would have been extremely unpopular. And the economy of Britain would have suffered, whereas other people letting their populations grow would have prospered. So if there is a bunch of elites, Is it just random? But I really feel like this HPV vaccine could turn out to be the... to be like the mark of the beast, because... although it's not... it's not compulsory yet, you know, if a girl doesn't have it at 12 or 13, she can always have it later. In fact, when I was looking, it was just saying it's free to have any woman, it's free to have between the ages of 12 and 25. So you can always have it later. And if the stories about the herpes are going away and, 
you know, because I knew when I was um, first learning about sex and waiting to lose my virginity, <laughs> I knew um, I'd heard it said that if you have sex with anyone who's had sex before, you will get genital warts. Like, it's everywhere. And my brother had had an AIDS test when he came back from Australia and I was so scared that he was going to have AIDS. You know, I'd have to watch him <laughs> suffer die or whatever I thought you know, I was just so scared so relieved when he came out of the test result place and he was like yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I'd even started to think you know if he does get it he might pretend but you could just tell the way he came out there's no pretending um, anyway so you know that's it sounds like a no-brainer doesn't it like who's not Who's then going to think, oh, you know, have the H... Even, like, an older person might go. Because, uh, so, I had sex with a virgin the first time I had sex, so nothing bad happened. I think it was the second time I had sex, and I know she had had sex with someone else. And she wasn't very moist, and there was a bit of burning going on. And, you know, but I endured through it because... You know, sex was supposed to be great, so just get on with it. <laughs> but anyway, after that, I noticed on my bell end that there was there were these little sort of looked almost like warts. You know, and they sort of would. Fl you know, sometimes they would I would be they would be noticeable, and sometimes they would hardly see them at all, almost like they're gone. I think they it sort of came and went for a good few years like that. I'd say about four or five years, and then didn't see them again, and they haven't come back. And actually, I haven't had sex in eleven years, but there was quite a lot time in between that. Um, anyway, so you know, it does seem like a no-brainer, doesn't it? And um, so you know, it would seem like there would be pressure on everyone to to get the HPV vaccination and eradicate herpes and genital warts and anal cancer and cerv cervical cancer and penis cancer apparently there is now never heard of that one before um, you know why wouldn't you so there would be pressure like probably people even start asking you know, maybe before say, have you had the HPV vaccination? And maybe if you said no, maybe they'd be like, oh, don't want to have sex with you then. Even though the whole kind of thing doesn't make sense with vaccinations, doesn't it? I mean, I heard them say that, you know, even if everybody was vaccinated, um, you'd still need to keep vaccinating for, for a good few generations before you could say you've eradicated. So I guess it is very complex. Um, you know, I'm an anti-vaccine person. It just, in my bones, I, I've, I feel it's wrong. And, you know, they often use the smallpox. You know, we eradicated smallpox. But how do they know it just wasn't going away anyway? I mean, like the plague. They don't know where, they don't know why the plague stopped waves of plague for hundreds of years and we don't know it could come back I've, I've, I've done a video saying plague is back um, you know and the thing about um, these germs and everything is that they adapt so we always seem to get a new disease anyway and you know perhaps they just call it something else this time and say well now it's called SPSV and now we have to have an SPSV vaccine, but actually it's still a form of HPV. You know, isn't that likely to happen? And they just call it something else. You know, before measles, you know, we'd never had 
cancer before really had we I mean they say oh we probably did but um, you know they just didn't know what it was and people just died and <laughs> um, you know, what is cancer is like lumps and bumps and, you know, and they can be internal and then you're feeling fucking awful or coughing up blood and shit like that. You know, there's been diseases around like that before, haven't there? So, you know, what about if, if naturally we would usually get measles and mumps and then we would fight it off? Perhaps that was a key thing for the immune system to do. Uh, and and maybe when you're not doing that, maybe you're susceptible to cancer. You know, the thing is, I just think it's obviously a complicated area, and I can't claim to have read everything and know everything about it. You know, I think at best I know my own health, and I know I had some pretty severe stuff going on. I, um, you can see the scar there. Uh, uh, block wisdom tooth and it all swelled up and I couldn't open my mouth and it was so painful I ended up stabbing this lump <laughs> it drained and I could open my mouth again and I was happy and it came back about three times so that's why I got this scar there but the tooth is through now um, you know and I, I didn't go to the doctor, I let things take their course because I believed that it would it would work. Two years ago I something happened to my leg and for two weeks I couldn't walk and and I was wondering if it was caused by meditating. But I ended up meditating out of it. <laughs> so, you know, that gave me good faith in the fact that the human body does fix itself. And that believing is important, positivity is important. Keeping natural for me is important. That includes, you know, healthy, natural bacteria in and around me. That's like not using chemicals as much as possible. That's my my kind of thing. I just try and I just think if it's natural it's good, if it's not natural it's bad. So I don't worry about getting some mud on me, I'll just rub it into my hands. Wouldn't necessarily want to wash my hands after doing that, it's not no point. Um, so, you know, and treat the body as a whole, it's a, it's a holistic thing. So, okay, if I've got a problem with my toe, you know, not just to think, oh, let's focus on the toe, but maybe, you know, something in the body, you know. It's like, it's just a sign, it's it's there in the toe because there's probably a reason for it. There's probably a whole body map of, like, if you get something here, it means this and that and the other. So... You know, nature is our nurturer. Nature looks after us. And we're on this planet, we seem hell-bent on killing off nature. And that seems to come from most of the companies. But then again, you see that, you know, big companies swallow up small companies. So this elite, they, they are most likely the ones in charge of all these companies. So although we might make it seem, think it's a... A natural thing that the people are doing because the people keep going and buying the products of the big companies and so that's a way of condoning them and supporting them and they're raping the crap out of the earth knowing that it's going to bite back and I think this year I think this summer I think we're in for a big bite back this summer I think we're really going to notice it and then they're going to want to start implementing this HPV virus vaccine to our 12-year-old boys in September. I got, I got to say this is, uh, yeah, is it a different one for the boys and the girls. That would be something worth finding out. I should find that out. Or is it just pre-engineered to react differently in boys and girls? They, they'd probably be able to do that. It's 
what I mean. You just got to keep an open mind. If there's a possibility of something, then you shouldn't count it out. Read Sherlock Holmes. He would eliminate all possibilities. And then he would find what the truth was. And that's the way I approach things. So I, yes, I have hunches. I go on leads and things like that. You know, I'll be thinking more about this. Will more jigsaw puzzles fit into place? And by all means, I'm happy to have contributions if anyone thinks of anything. And, um... Yeah, until, until we've absolutely closed off the possibility, it should still be an open thing to think about. And I personally will not be given consent unless my son pleads for me to let him have it, if he feels it's right, if he's like, no, Dad, I want this, you know, I want this, then fine, it'll be up to him, I'll let him choose. But while the choice is in my hands, it's a no, especially the first year. But even so, this is my thing. <laughs> Worst case scenario is that it would affect something way beyond in the future. That's the worst case scenario. If it was something that came out in five years, if it made them, these boys, sterile, then we would know about it within five years. And although that would be really, really bad, then it would only affect, you know, five years worth of kids, as opposed to 30 years worth, right? If it makes their children sterile, we wouldn't know for 30 years. And then you vaccinated, they could probably vaccinate the world in 30 years. If they were pushing this agenda, you know, and we could all get a Tinder app and just go around shagging everybody, wouldn't that be great? I don't think so. Um... I think the more times you have sex, it cheapens it. That's simply what I think. And then you, you know, you basically want to do it with somebody new. And then if you kept doing it with new people, after a while that would just really cheapen it, wouldn't it? It just wouldn't be as meaningful as it could be. I think there's something that should be saved for someone you, someone you really love. And I think that's partly why. That's what I see as a sign of, you know, if people are getting... Who's that? People are getting anal cancer. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit dodgy. People come into my door. Um, people are getting anal cancer or penis cancer after practicing anal sex. You know, isn't that then a sign that okay, this is wrong? You know, this is this is a an abuse of what this body was designed to do it wasn't designed for that it's a sign if tobacco had been affected me more if I um, had had bad stuff from it then I would take that as a sign but so far touch wood it doesn't seem to have impacted my health that much, you know. I could probably be fitter, but then, you know, I'm pretty fit. I can still go and play a couple of sets of tennis weekly. I can do jogging. I'm all right. So, It could be, it's possible, that this is like the mark of the beast. 
this HPV vaccine will have some unintended, accidentally releasing something into the genetics. This could be the agenda. Just don't dismiss it just because of apathy or just because, oh, we can trust the government or... Really think, can you? Can you really? Okay.